What was the very first thing you did when you went into work today? The first thing I did was check my email. I had some emails from a couple clients and I had to send out a proposal for a potential project. When you said you sent out a proposal, does that mean, is that like a, like a contract between you? Like saying that, hey, we're making an offer on this project, like we could do it for this month? Yeah, pretty much. It's not a contract, but the contract's the next step. So we send out proposals to outline the scope of work because what we're doing as an architect is really project specific. It depends from client to client and project to project. So after a couple meetings or phone calls or emails back and forth, we get a good idea of what a potential client's looking for. We'll write a proposal letter and it'll outline our role, the information the owner has to provide to us for us to do our job and a cost estimate. So you basically sent out the proposal a letter like, like, hey, like after we, we've met together and we've sat down, we can do this for you and it'll cost this amount of money? Yeah, pretty much. On most of our projects, we do some construction as well, but on most of our projects, we're doing the design, the drafting, the documentation side of things. So most of our work, it's not material costs like a contractor, it's time, it's labor. So we're basically, for most projects, we're just estimating how many hours are we going to spend putting together this drawing set. And for select projects, design build projects, we'll eventually get the you know construction bidding, which is a whole other thing. It's a lot more complicated. But for the most part, it's we're just estimating the amount of hours that it's going to take. In our proposals, we kind of pre-qualify our clients. We'll ask them a series of questions. We'll have them fill out the survey to get as much information from them as we can about their project. Like, we want to know what their budget is, what their timeline is. We want to know if their project's even feasible before we sink a bunch of time into preparing, into learning about their project and writing a proposal. Our first step when anyone reaches out is we want to know, first of all, what their budget and their schedule is. If they don't have a budget and they don't have a timeline, then that tells us they're not serious about their project or they need to go and think about it and get back to us. But we really don't proceed unless they can at least kind of provide that basic information. You know, other people are just kind of shopping and they'll just waste your time. Now, after you did your emails and sent your proposal, what did you do after that? So there are a couple of projects that I'm working on right now in different stages, I guess. So most of the rest of my day has been working on drawings and working on designs for a new project. So I've got a project that's toward the end of design and it's nearing kind of the, the construction document or permit stage. So we're getting ready to package up those drawings and hand them off to the builder to go and take them to the building department and get a building permit working on those drawings, adding a lot more detail into the drawings, adding notes and making sure there aren't any code violations or anything that's going to prevent the project from getting a building permit. And that can be one of the more tedious parts of the process. And then after I spent a couple hours on that, I, I've been working on the design for a new project that's in the very early stages where I'm hand sketching over I've got trace paper, so um, sketching over a basic site plan and basic building footprint and trying to start laying out this new project that we're working on. And pretty soon I'll take my sketches and I'll put those in the computer and I'll start drafting it and modeling it and, and adding more detail to develop that design. You were going over the plans, making sure that everything had the notes in it and that it was it was ready for like the permit phase and the construction phase. Are you just adding notes like, okay, this has to be spaced this far to meet this code or is that pretty much all you're doing? So I'm looking for a handful of things. First of all, putting together drawings is kind of an art in itself. And some people take a lot of pride in their drawing sets and really want them to be very clear and legible. You know, it's like the design of the project is one thing, but then your documentation of your design, which is, is your, your construction document, a lot of architects, myself included, want those to be very clear so that we can kind of cut down on communication issues and any other types of issues during the construction process. Like we want to hand them off to a, a contractor and minimize the number of questions that come back or minimize the things that are kind of located in the wrong spot. So it's kind of this refining process of looking at the drawings, making sure all the information is there, but also making sure that it's presented clearly. So everything has to be dimensioned. The building department wants to see that, but also a builder needs to know where every wall in the project is going, how things are being laid out. 
the layout of a project also has to be coordinated with the structure of a project because sometimes, you know, you have other consultants and, or engineers putting together other drawings and all of these things have to be coordinated together. So it really depends project to project, but there is certain information that the building department always wants to see. And then there's just information that you kind of learn through experience that should go into a drawing to make the contractor's job easier. Are you responsible for knowing all the rules and regulations for each like city or county that you're working in then? Yeah, if we have a project in a certain location, then yeah, we're the ones responsible for making sure that our drawings are meeting building code requirements and energy code requirements. Now, for the most part, building code requirements are pretty standard throughout the country. There is a kind of a model code that most jurisdictions, whether it's county or city, most places adopt this model code and they'll make minor revisions to it based on what's important to a jurisdiction or, or, or things that they want to change or adjust. Some jurisdictions will increase the energy requirements, for instance, require you to have more insulation and require your home to perform better. So you kind of have to be aware of that, but it's not like you have to learn completely new standards for every project. There's the base code, the, the model code is more or less the same for every project. At least there's one code for residential projects and there's one code for commercial projects and there's there are different requirements depending on the size of your project and the type of your project. But more or less, you know, when you're working on a certain project type, the codes are pretty standard. And are the codes something that you learn in school or is that something you got to wait until you get into the real world to actually know? Most of that comes with real world experience, particularly grad school programs. We'll teach a little bit of code analysis into a design studio. But for the most part, you learn a lot of that by working in the profession. The codes change too, you know, every few years. You have to stay up to date. When you're doing these drawings, whether on the computer or, or hand sketch, is it all like 2D drawings or some of them like 3D orthogonal type pictures uh, or are they all just 2D sketches? Both, I definitely use floor plans and elevation drawings, which are 2D drawings a lot to first lay out a project, like lay out, plan the kind of spaces in the room and make sure everything kind of fitting into the building footprint or, you know, to adjust, manipulate a building footprint if that's, if you're working within an existing footprint or you're kind of designing on a more of an open site. And then elevation drawings can help you, or in section drawings can, which are cuts through the building can start to help you see how things are fitting together vertically, how things are, are stacking up, and how the exterior shell of the building is coming together. So 3D drawings are definitely helpful as well. And I'll work back and forth between, sometimes a project will start with just some really rough hand sketches. Those will go into the computer to create really basic drawings. And I can print those out and sketch over those again. And so it's a back and forth between computer and hand drawing. Pretty efficient process that works for me to kind of take the best of both worlds. So you did start that new project, like the design phase, with actual hand sketches. Is that always how you start out? Usually for me, yeah. Some people will start in the computer, but I at least like to, in a sketchbook or on sketch paper, you know, I can very quickly get out some rough design ideas and maybe some notes and some thoughts about a project. And then I take that and really quickly, without putting too much thought into it, I can get that into the computer and then go back to hand sketching as I need to. I think that that is a good starting point for me because you can really get caught up working in the computer and really kind of wasting time over details that don't matter so early in the design process. Like you were saying before, when you were finishing up the specifications and the dimensions, you could all of a sudden like get involved in that when you're like, okay, now we don't need that right now, We that's later. Yeah, I mean, I think you want to be thinking about a lot of these, you know, potential issues that you might have down the road, and you want to be thinking about those up front. You don't want to work yourself into a corner where you have this unresolvable code issue and you have to redesign a lot of things. Every line you put into it, like the computer is dimensioned, it's in a specific location, and, you know, working on a piece of paper, things can be rougher and looser, and you can kind of work by intuition more than by moving things around on a computer screen. Now, when you say that you put your hand drawings into the computer, do you just like scan them in or how does that work? Yeah, sometimes. I can either scan them in and actually work over them as like an overlay in the modeling software that I use. Mm -hmm. That's one option. Or sometimes I'll just 
transcribed right from you know i can look at a drawing or a sketch and just draw that on the computer and quickly get my sketch kind of modeled yeah computer yeah. But it depends what kind of progress did you make with that second project where you drew it out did you make did you make some good progress it's kind of a tricky project actually because it's a pretty narrow building footprint and i've got to fit two bedrooms and a couple bathrooms and kitchen living dining and a staircase all into a pretty small footprint so by sketching it out i was able to work through five or six different options and landed on two pretty rough ideas that i'm going to pursue so i'll end up developing two different ideas on the computer and they'll be dimensioned and annotated and then i can take those to the client and we can have a discussion based on those did you do anything after that yeah i'm going to take a couple of those sketches that i was working on and start modeling them I feel like i got to a pretty good point at least on one of the options and one of them might need a little bit more work so i might be doing a little bit more sketching this afternoon but got one option that i feel pretty good about and I'm going to take that into the computer and see how it works out and now I can tweak it as necessary. That's cool. So now when you say you're going to model it, do you mean putting it into, I forgot, what was the software that you use? It's called Revit, which is one of several different types of software. It's called BIM, Building Information Modeling. And basically what it is, is it's 3D modeling software where instead of drawing a line, you're drawing a wall component that has information in it that if you click on it, it will tell you that this wall is two by four and two layers of five eighths inch jet board. So it's got all this information kind of built in instead of drawing each line individually, kind of model these components and, you know, select the height of it and, and make sure everything's working, not just in plan, but three dimensionally. You can kind of work two dimensionally, like I can sketch out a floor plan, but then that floor plan also kind of exists three dimensionally. There's a huge advantage over working in AutoCAD where all you have is a series of lines. And if you make a change to one part of a drawing set, you have to go through and make sure that you manually make that change everywhere else in the drawing set. Whereas here, if you move a wall in one of your drawings, that wall is going to move in all of your drawings. You know, you still have to kind of go through and make sure graphically that everything that is so clearly kind of illustrated. So did you do anything else after that? We kind of had a meeting to kick off a couple of new projects. So we're putting together kind of a new product, which are these package plan sets that will be something for clients who are looking for a design or for a home. And we'll have a couple of different options, but it'll be kind of off the shelf with some optional upgrades so that people can kind of, there's a base for home design that people can kind of take and have a really kind of big head start on the design process. So now is this for just homeowners that like want to build their own house? And possibly for builders as well. In particular, we've had a big demand for people looking for smaller homes, you know, tiny homes or like second smaller apartments on their property, you know, a cabin, things like that, because the cost of housing is so high right now. And so that's kind of a product that we can offer people who don't necessarily have a budget to design something from scratch, but we can offer them these really pretty designed documents for a fraction of what it costs to go through the whole design process. So that's the goal with the next couple of projects that we're working on. How long will it take you guys to, to make these new plans? You know, our plan is to just kind of really quickly through them. I mean, we have most of the information we need already. We'll produce some images. We do all of our 3D renderings in-house. So we have actually pretty powerful software. So we can actually go from this BIM software, this 3D modeling software, right into this real-time rendering software that, you know, you can zoom around, scroll around, add materials, at trees and landscaping and really bring it to life. I mean, you can add people, you can create video walkthroughs. What's that software called? The one we use is called Twin Motion, and Unreal Engine is what powers it. Now, when I'm picturing like that, you guys make a set of plans for a project or something, there's, mm -hmm. you know, a stack of paper and it's mostly 2D drawing, maybe some 3D ortho stuff. But now, are you saying like every project or every plan set you guys make, you're also going to have this sort of 3D video game type walkthrough for <laughs> everything? No, it's really kind of a marketing tool or like a, a presentation tool that we can use to show our clients or that we can use to kind of illustrate design. It's kind of separate from the construction documents, which are much more like you're describing. The construction documents are 2D drawings, pretty much black and white drawings with lots of information, lots of layers going to be floor plans and section cuts and lots of details and schedules that list out all of the components that go into the house, specifications that describe how things need to be built. 
that's what the construction documents are. That, that hasn't changed. And that's what's actually uh, used to build the stuff. Yeah, exactly. That makes a lot of sense because, yeah, a customer, you can show them drawings and stuff, but a 3D rendering, like video game type thing, would obviously, they can visualize yeah. that much better. Now, with like a bigger company, are they really going to do the whole rendering thing? Big companies definitely use rendering. Not everyone, but yeah, absolutely. I mean, if you ever see, like, for instance, a lot of developer-driven projects will have rendering. Bigger projects will have rendering. 